right. Yeah, so one thing I remember specifically that like sticks out to me is when we shut down Washington Street to film uh, right after Bill teleported from the beach, well, with everybody teleported from the beach to the middle of like a street. And in the scene, I, uh, the hitman comes and saves Bill from like getting hit by a car, you know, because why not? And before we started filming, Benny, the director and executive producer, was very keen on getting permits for everything that we needed to do, like especially uh, shutting down an entire street for two hours to film. So, you know, I remember uh, Connor and Christian and Sam and all the other producers going out and doing stuff like that, getting everything locked down, getting permits. And I remember the day came, finally, it was like 9 o'clock in the morning, we set up in the middle of Washington Street. We had Christian on one side of the street telling traffic, like, right before we would shoot, like, okay, you can't come through. Like, we were about to take a shot. And he got a lot of flack for it, too. So, I mean, good, good for Christian. You know, good on him for taking all that heat. Um, but I wanted to do a rehearsal shot before just to make sure, like, nothing would go bad. Like, you know, we didn't fall on concrete, you know, because I personally didn't want to eat asphalt. So... You know, uh, we did the rehearsal shot. Benny calls action. Um, you know, James runs through, grabs me. I'm disoriented, you know. And all of a sudden, we just hear, get out of the street. And you look up the street, and here comes this cop and some dude in a cowboy hat. And it's like, oh. And so he comes over. He's like, y'all just need to get out of the street. You don't have permission to do this. And James is like, just someone bring over the permit, but I'm a little bit more freaked out because there was a cop just screaming at me. I've never done anything bad in my life, even though I go to Ohio University, Athens. I don't do bad things. It's only good, good, good kids here at Ohio University. So Benny comes over with Christian, and Christian like throws the permit at this officer. The officer's looking at it, cowboy hats behind them, like, like this, like waiting for an answer. And the cop looks at it, and he just looks back up at Benny and goes, yeah, he signed off. Street years until 11, and it was like just that easy. So now we know that getting a permit can save an entire shoot. An entire film can be saved just because you can shut down an entire street. Um, going back to, I forgot his name again, the mm -hmm. one who played the hitman. Uh, James. Yeah, how, how was your chemistry with James while shooting? Because it looked pretty good. Yeah, James and I, yeah, we, we hit it off pretty good. Um, yeah. I knew James before we started shooting, but like not that well. Like I knew James. I knew he was a very eccentric person. Like I knew he was, you know, James Rankin. You know, you know, I'm, I'm James Rankin. This is Jackass. Like stuff like that. So, and then once we started shooting, and like he actually was able to get into character very well, and was able to portray this hitman as a very, like, authoritative figure, but also at the same time someone who doesn't know what the hell is going on. I think he did a very good job at that, and I think that. There might be a future for him doing this stuff. I'm just saying, James. I think I think he'd be real good at it. So, yeah, I think our chemistry was really well, especially because there was a lot of physical interaction between me and James. There there wasn't a scene I think where he wasn't just chasing me, or like you know decking me or tackling me to the ground. Like it was just you know you had to get comfortable with someone that, and you had to be comfortable with someone doing that to you for like two weekends straight. So you know. I think we were pretty close by the end of the shoot, so, yeah. How do you think the team, as like the club as a whole, worked mm -hmm. uh, in this shoot? I think that we worked very well. Um, it's definitely a very new club, so it's like we don't have all the kinks worked out, but I think that Glitch was a very good opportunity for people to get a feel of their jobs and get a feel for what pre-production, you know, in you know the actual production aspect and in the post which is you know what we're working on right now it's very it's a very big learning curve for everybody especially for the freshmen that have never done anything like myself on anything like this so I think that it's you know we're still in its infancy but I think you know by the time we're done with our second picture and then going in the spring quarter I think that you know the last two films we do are going to be pretty solid I'm not saying the glitch isn't solid I'm just saying like you know you can definitely tell that we were babies on it. Like, we're just little infants that don't know what we're doing. But I'd say that it's a still a very good film at the end of the day. So moving on to our next film, you don't have to mention the name, mm -hmm. so I don't know if we're, like, trying to mm -hmm. hype it up. You know, that's just kind of mm -hmm. great stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, moving on to our next film, do you think we're going to have... Do you think, like, we've learned some 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that we've learned a lot about production itself and time management. I think we've learned a lot about time management from Glitch. And I think that that will, we learned a lot about that and audio because I remember the first day of shooting, we just had, and it was no one's fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. It was just the machine's fault. So it's not like we could do anything about it. But I remember audio, we had so many issues with that on the first day. So I think we've learned about audio and time management more than anything when it comes to shooting a short film. So hopefully the next one will be, you know, easier than this one will be, or was, so. Um, when it comes to casting for this film, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't necessarily set that you were going to be filled, mm-hmm. right? but it just kind of happened and whatnot. Yeah. How, how did that How did that go for you? <sighs> So, what happened was we went to a we had our, our our weekly meeting on Sunday, and then right after that we had a writers meeting, and we were talking to Benny, and he's like, yeah, all we have is um, um, the 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 role of the t- the girl teleporter, and it was like we need a bill, and I was just kind of like, I'll do it, uh, not thinking anything about the fact like, oh, I I'll have to be a Russian, first off, and. I'm a redhead of all things. So, you know, it was like two days before we started shooting and I texted Benny like, hey, am I still Bill? He's like, yeah, you're Bill. Like, I was like, oh, oh, okay. So then I remember I didn't have any beach clothes. So I had to call my parents back in Chillicothe, Ohio, which is about an hour from here. And I had to have my dad came down. I told him I'd buy him lunch. So my dad came down and he had like all my beach clothes. Like, so everything you're seeing is everything brought to me by my parents so thanks mom and dad for that one so but yeah then I got to play Bill which was kind of cool because my name's William so I mean that was neat um I'm not sure if I asked this already but um this club being like a film club and whatnot Mm -hmm. so the experiences that you learned uh you were mainly doing acting Mm -hmm. do you think you continue on doing acting because I know that really Mm -hmm. isn't the niche Going mm-hmm. forward, but um, based on what you learned here, is that kind of something you'd like? Yeah, I definitely think that someone who wants to work behind the scenes should definitely have on screen experience too, because I think it's easier to relate and have like empathy with an actor who like you're trying to get across like what they need to do. Because, like, I also served as like script supervisor on the film as well, and I understand that it's like, oh, I'm reading this, like, you know, I have the script, I got to make sure we get the shots, and I understand like. You know, if I was just sitting there, like, oh, okay, take one, bad, take two, bad. Like, but actually being a part of it at the same time, like, I get how, like, I don't want to say miserable, but I can get how it can get frustrating. It's like, okay, that take wasn't good enough, we got to do it again. That, that take wasn't good enough, we got to do it again. So I think that definitely helps with you knowing the limits of an actor at the same time while also trying to make sure that you have progress made on the production of a film. But yeah, I'd be down to acting again if I had to do it. So yeah, I had a good time doing it.